I have returned. All right, let's continue. Chapter one, Carrie Buck. In early 1924, Carrie Buck, a dark-haired 17-year-old girl with a tomboy spirit, was living with a foster family in downtown Charlottesville, Virginia. John Dobbs, an officer of the peace, and his wife, Alice, had taken Carrie in as a toddler with a single mother who had fallen on hard times. The situation seemed to offer Carrie the chance to grow up in a well-off, loving family. But that was not to be. Um, in her years of living in the Dobbs's tiny, tidy home on Grove Street, Carrie had been less a daughter than a housemaid. She would later recall the endless work and servants' chores and a wistful feeling of never being a family member. To be fair, like, as a teenager and a kid, like, I never wanted to do chores, so I, I'm not going to judge this. I'm a, I obviously assume this was just, like, abuse in some way, but I can just see this as, like, being a young kid not wanting to work and do shit. I think this is also before like child labor laws in certain ways so anyways John and Alice Dobbs liked to tell people they had taken Carrie in as a kind of as an act of kindness if that had been their initial motivation the wellspring of goodwill had long since been depleted Carrie had always fit in well with the household and had been working harder than any since her foster parents decided to take her out of school Recently, however, there had been trouble. The Dobbses said they could no longer care for the young, uh, care for their young charge. Uh, oh, and they decided it was time for her to leave. Uh, John Dobbs made an appointment with uh, Mary Duke, the uh, Secretary of Public Welfare whose job involved helping Charlottesville's less fortunate and helping the city's better off uh, residents deal with the problem they supposed. Uh, at their meeting, Dobbs confirmed that the real problem in his household, Carrie, had become pregnant out of wedlock. The Dobbses wanted help in sending her away to an institution. When Duke learned who the young girl was, she was pro predisposed to be leave the worst. She had never met Carrie, but she had encountered her mother, Emma, who, while doing charitable work around town, um, era Emma Book Duke had decided was of bad character. Um, geez. Duke went to talk with Alice Dobbs to learn more. Miss Dobbs said she and her husband had done everything in her power to help Carrie. They sent her to church and Sunday school, but despite the instruction she had received, she could not be trusted to lead a moral life. Mrs. Dobbs told Duke she had left Carrie home alone a few days the previous summer, but Carrie had not behaved herself, and the result was her pregnancy. Under Duke's guidance, the Dobbses began the formal process of having Carrie sent away. They did not take place they did not try to place her in a home for the unwed mothers. Instead, they per they petitioned Charlottesville Juvenile and Domestic Relation Courts to have Carrie, a white female child of the age of 17 years, declared feeble-minded and epileptic. They told the court they could no longer have her in their home and asked that she be committed to the Virginian colony for epileptics and feeble-minded. The term the term feeble-minded was widely used at the time, but only vaguely defined. There was no precise medical description. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if there was, it would still be really messed up either way, honestly. A catch-all term that covered a wide range of purported uh, deficiencies. It might mean that the person was of low intelligence or that he or she behaved in ways that offended the middle-class sensibilities of doctors, judges, or social workers. In the case of young women, it often meant ex exhibiting what was regarded as an excessive or inappropriate interest in sex. In most cases, it did not take much evidence to have someone declared feeble-minded and locked up, and so it was with the charge charges against Carrie. Um, the Dobbses had no proof she was mentally deficient, and her grades from school for as long as she had been allowed to attend showed no lack of intelligence. Um, nor 
were there any medical records to support the claim that Carrie was epileptic because she was not. The Dobbs's petition was not set down for an inquisition. Uh, oh, the Dobbs petition was set down for an inquisition on January 23rd for the Commission of Feeble Mindedness. The commission made up of a judge and two physicians would take evidence and then decide Carrie's fate. With her foster parents and the Charlottesville Department of Public Welfare aligned against her, Carrie would be on her own. Even though she was 17 and had limited education, there were no provisions for assigning a lawyer or guardian to look out for her interests. As a result, there would be no one at the hearing to argue that she was neither feeble-minded nor epileptic, nor would there be anyone to bring up the hidden facts that the Dobbs did not want mentioned, such, such as how it was that Carrie had become pregnant. Um, uh, Carrie Elizabeth Buck was born in Charlottesville on July 2nd, 1906. Charlottesville was the seat of Abrahamic, uh, oh, Alber, Albemarle County, a rural uh, county in West Vir Central uh, Virginia that had some of the state's best farmland nourished by the uh, Ravana and James Rivers. Lying some 125 miles northwest of Jamestown, the first permanent English outpost in America, Albemarle County was settled early on by explorers who saw a bright future in its lush landscape. The English who had arrived in 1600s found that uh, region's rich soil per particularly well suited to growing tobacco, which soon became the stable crops for exporting, exporting back to England. Other crops were no less successful. Hemp, also for uh, export, wheat, barley, and rye to sell back, uh, locally, and the Albemarle pep Pipin, which would become Queen Victoria's favorite apple. In a letter back home, one gratified settler described land so rich and fertile that when a man has 50 acres of ground, two men servants, a maid, and some cattle, neither he nor his wife do anything but visit among their neighbors. Uh, Plantations soon arose on the region's lucrative soil, carved out the land of the Saponi Indianas, uh, Indians and other tribes, and built on the backs of uh, enslaved Africans and their descendants. The plantations, in turn, gave rise to an affluent and well-educated uh, architectural elite, agricultural elite, sorry. The Virginian the Virginia planters in the region around the Charlottesville were in the forefront of agricultural science, military affairs, and above all, politics, forming a significant part of the intellectual leadership of the emerging American Republic.